I'm Brittany Lung, and I would like to welcome you to this episode of Race Face Spotlight. Today, we're headed out west to Menlo Park, California, where we find 14-year-old 5150 Toyota Racing Development Race Face driver Jesse Love. Jesse, that is a lot of titles. How are you doing this evening? I'm doing great, California. It's so not too hot out, not too cold, so it's just right. I'm having a lot of fun being home, but about to head out pretty soon. Jesse, you are one busy young man racing in multiple series all over the country, competing in the Power Eye National Midget Series, Wing Sprint Cars, the BCRA Midgets, SRL Late Models. Did I leave anything out? No, you're pretty spot on. Uh, sometimes we like to fill a different uh, number of classes in, like Legend Cars over the Winter Series, but uh, so maybe some outlaw carts during the winter. But other than that, uh, yeah, it's pretty spot on. Now, with competing in so many series, how many races do you think you will be competing in this year? It started off as only about like 70 races, I think. And then over the last few months or so, it just skyrocketed. And I think we're north of about 110 races now. So it's definitely a busy schedule, but it's a lot of fun. Ooh, I'm tired just listening to you talk about it. Um, let's start with the Power Eye National Midget Series, where you are driving for the legendary Keith Coons. What has that been like? Yeah, that's just been a dream of mine. Uh, I think it was like honestly my one of my first dreams ever since I was a kid. I remember being at Calistoga when I was probably about nine or ten years old. My dad and uh, you know you see these, it's like a, it's like the biggest uh, accomplishment you know a dirt guy could probably have. Um, is just to be able to drive for Keith Coons and win races for Keith and uh, as well as win championships for him. So, um, yeah, it was just kind of a dream that I had for a long time. And uh, it's definitely, you know, my biggest dream ever in racing. So for it to actually become a reality was really cool. That's amazing. Dreams coming true. Um, there have been weeks now where you have raced three to five nights in a row. How tough is that mentally, physically, the organization and logistics that go into the planning of all of that? Yeah, well, definitely with the planning and the logistics and stuff like that, I have an amazing team of people behind me that have worked so hard to uh, make sure that I'm at the right places at the right time. And I uh, just set everything up so that I can go racing as much as I do uh, during the weekdays and the weekends. And um, as far as myself goes, I'm, uh, I feel like I have a, just a ton of energy, especially when I'm racing. Um, luckily, I don't seem to get too tired um, just because I feel like when you're doing what you love and you're having so much fun, uh, you know, the sleep kind of just takes care of itself. So, um, yeah, I'm having a ton of fun doing it and I love, you know, having these action packed schedules. I totally agree with you. You derive energy from something that you love instead of it being something that drains you. I also understand from talking with Rod that you've had your fair share of rainouts. So you fly from California only to get to the Midwest and watch that it's being rained out. Now, how frustrating is that for you? It's definitely pretty frustrating, but I've come up with a solution. Um, if that does happen, I just look on uh, my phone and check the schedule for wing car races out in the west coast and call my car owner car owner uh harley van dyke and um, try to convince them to go run some wing car races i love running the wing car so um you know every time we do get rained out i try to make the, the most of it and uh, get to go run a wing car race somewhere in california i love that you don't let it get you down and that you're proactive in making plans to do something else Let's talk a little bit about your BCRA midget wins so far this year. The big one being the Gerhardt Classic at Madeira Speedway in July. Yeah, definitely. I remember going there as a kid um, when I was like eight or anywhere from five years old to eight years old, um, even nine years old. When I went to the core midget track right next door, and we always go over and watch the midget races if they were running that weekend. And always the biggest one was the Gerhardt Classic. Uh, I mean, I remember, I don't remember because I wasn't probably around, but uh, I've heard a lot of stories of uh, people, you know, saying, I mean, there was times where there were just, you know, over 30, 40, 50 cars at the Gerhardt Classic. And, um, you know, there's definitely a lot of prestige to it. Um, I watched a lot of really great drivers win that race, and I saw a lot of uh, really great drivers on the roster for winning that race. So um, just to be on the same um, race as those guys and be able to be competitive in that um race is also really cool so i remember going there as a kid and uh so 
kind of flash forward and now you're winning the race was really cool. I know that you were a two-time junior late model champion, winning those titles both in 2017 and 2018. What does it take to be able to hop from an open wheel car to an SRL late model? Yeah, well, that's just kind of one of those things that um, if you kind of run them both enough, you kind of get a different um, programming in your mind. So when I get in the uh, junior late model or now SRL uh, super late model, and then I get into the midget, I kind of have just a set program that, okay, I need a, I know I need to get into this, you know, mindset and I need to drive the car this way and uh, same way with the wing car and same way with, uh, with the super late model. So, um, you know, I definitely at first it was a little bit of, um, I don't know about a struggle, but it was definitely a learning curve, especially going from weeks of just racing on dirt and then getting into a pavement super late model. Um, you know, you're not exactly driving that thing sideways. So, um, Definitely a little bit different every time you get in the car, but uh, that just makes for a better challenge. At, at this point in your career, do you prefer open wheel or late model, dirt or pavement? Um, I'll just give it to you straight. I'm definitely an open wheel guy. I have been since I was young, and uh, I don't think anything's more fun than dirt track racing, so I'm definitely a dirt uh, open wheel guy. Um, it's definitely my favorite form of racing um, just because you get to – there's a whole different, um, I guess, mood and, uh, you, you know, things go on differently at a dirt track. And, uh, honestly, when I'm in the winter months, I really get withdrawals without, you know, racing on the dirt. It's just so different. And, uh, there's definitely a little, you know, different, uh, mindset that you go into with reading the dirt and, uh, just racing itself. It's so much fun. And I, uh, I'm definitely loving the dirt. I know that you absolutely love racing and that it sounds like you're doing it a lot of the time, but what does Jesse do when you are actually not racing? So for the few select days, I'm actually not on the road traveling or, or doing anything racing related, uh, which isn't you know too much. But when I do have that time, I um, definitely like to spend time with my friends and my family, but also I like to uh, sense live in California. Uh, the coast is only about 30 minutes up the way, so I usually take the surfboard out and go uh, surf for a little bit uh, in Santa Cruz and uh, Pacifica up there on the north and um, just, you know, really soothing and uh, a lot of fun. You have quite the following on social media, almost 70,000 video views online in August and constantly in the news. You have a huge following through your website where you mail out over a thousand hero cards to fans so far this year. Then that's not counting the thousands that you've given out trackside. What makes Jesse Love so popular? Well, I feel like um, I like to be as straightforward and as genuine as possible. Um, but also the biggest thing is just um, I've really realized how amazing my fan group is, and they're all such great people. I've had uh, some fans of the Bowel family. They've come out on their anniversary to the racetrack. Uh, we actually, I think we won that night too. Um, you know, they came out on their anniversary and uh, watched this race, and there's just so many amazing fans out there. And to um, have an amazing fan base like I have, I'm just so, so grateful to them. And um, I hope that they, you know, they see that and, uh, I see, you know, how much, uh, you know, loyalty they were given to me and how much um, support that they give me is just so amazing and um, almost just overwhelming how much support they give me. So um, I just can't thank them all enough because it really just makes it worth what we do. And especially when you um, go to a racetrack and the, pan and the sands are just packed, um, you know, standing room only, it's like the best, you know, theme of racing you can get. So, um, you know, the fans, they just, they make racing go around without, um, without fans, we wouldn't have racing. So um, it's just a really important uh, part to racing in general. Jesse, I understand that you recently adopted a child through the Friends of Jacqueline Foundation. Can you tell me a little bit about that experience? Yeah, that's just been such an amazing experience. I've been able to meet and uh, partner up with William Perez and the whole Perez family. And they're just such great people. Uh, they're some of my biggest fans. I've come out to so many of my races and had such great times. William, uh, William is actually a dirt track guy too. He came out to one of the sprint car races and he was like, this is my favorite one. So he's a really great kid. He's a really great family. And it's just so, I'm so honored to be able to be part of the Friends of Jacqueline Foundation. And, um, definitely help the whole Perez family. It's so awesome. I keep in touch with them, um, you know, as much as I can. And they're all just having a great time and William's doing really well. So um, it's great to, uh, to know that 
we're making you know a bit of a difference. It's awesome. That's really wonderful. You've set numerous records for being the youngest to win, including the USAC HPD Dirt Pavement and Overall Champion making you the youngest in history to win the Triple Crown, youngest to win a full-size midget race, breaking Jeff Gordon's record, then went on to win the BCRA Championship. This year, the youngest to win the Gerhardt Classic, and recently the youngest to stand on the podium in the Power Eye National Midget Series with a win. What is next on your bucket list? Yeah, I think uh, what's next is just to win a few races with KKM. Um, just because you, uh, when you have a dream like that and it becomes a reality, you want to make the most of it. And, uh, you know, the KKM deal is um, all I could ever ask for in my racing career. It was the biggest um, accomplishment uh, that I ever thought of, you know, happening. Uh, just because it's like climbing Mount Everest and you, when you see these guys, the whole KKM crew for the first time, um, it's so hard to even, you know, fathom that one day you might be driving for them. So. Um, I just want to go win some races for them, and um, I want to do really well for them. It sounds like a wonderful goal. Now, how are the older drivers treating you with all of the success that you've had? So my success compared to their success, um, as I do, you know, as a 14-year-old, have a decent amount. Um, they just, you know, they outrank me. They can tower over me and just, you know, squish me with, with the palm of their hand. So, um you know, they, they definitely, they're great people, everybody in the racing community right now, um, especially the, um, at, you know, KKM and uh, the SRL Southwest Tour and Wing Car Racing. They're all great people, um, and I love racing with them. Uh, but, you know, they don't owe me any respect. I have to go earn it from them. Can you give us a glimpse into your 2020 season? Um, I'd like to. I'm not sure what's going to um, happen right now. We're still working things out. Nothing's in writing yet. But hopefully we keep moving up in the stock car ranks and um, keep moving up in the wing car ranks as well as uh, hopefully we can um, go run some high ranks as well in the midget. You have a special relationship with your dad. Full support from your mom and your biggest fan is your sister. How important is your family to you? They mean the world to me. I love them to bits. Um, I can't thank them all enough for uh, giving me so much support. Uh, they're just like my biggest support team. Uh, you know, they... they Believe it or not, they added me to this group chat. Apparently, I wasn't even a part of for like a few months, right? And it's just my mom. And it was called like Love Family, but, um, <laughs> you know, it's just they always crack me up. They always make me smile. They always make me laugh. Um, so I love when I get to uh, spend time with them. My sister's actually off right now at school, so I miss her so much. And hopefully, um, if we can pull off a win uh, in the next, I think it's four days, that uh, I'll be sending them all a picture in the, in the group chat of uh, me holding that trophy. Jesse, if you had a magical crystal ball, what does your future look like? Well, I want to do a few things in my life, uh, especially with racing. I want to do, I want to win the Indianapolis 500. That's my biggest goal, my biggest dream. Um, just the prestige, the amount of so much great talent that's won that race. Um, it's just, it's overwhelming to even thinking about it. Um, but I also really want to win the Daytona 500, um, as well as I really want to win the Chili Bowl. And, um, Obviously, my favorite probably my favorite dirt track is Venture Raceway, so I really want to win Turkey Night there. Tell us something that most people wouldn't know about you. Um, well, I'm addicted to 5150 energy drinks. That's probably the biggest thing that most people don't know about me. But um, other than that, you know, I'm, I'm a pretty um, you know straightforward person. What you see is kind of what you get. You know what I mean? Um, but just kind of I don't know. I don't really have anything that. Um, people probably don't know about me. Would you like to give a shout out to your sponsors? Yeah, definitely. I can't thank 5150 Mobile One, Toy Racing Development, and JBL Audio enough for supporting me throughout this season. I can't thank them all enough, as well as all my fans. Um, you guys uh, really support me so much, and I can't thank you all enough. So hopefully we can go pick off a few wins this weekend and uh, make the most of it. Jesse, thank you so much for your time. There you have it, what an amazing young man. To learn more about Jesse, check him out at jessieloveracing.com. Follow him on social media. Don't forget, if you want to catch up on any of the Race Face Spotlight shows, you can do so at raceface.tv on demand. Until next time, I'm Brittany Lung. Thanks for watching.